Very, very impressive. And he reaches out, but doesn't seem to make contact. And he's holding his knee. This is a nightmare start for Dexterity Depot. This is quarterfinals night, and we have only the very best. The top eight teams from across the Americas. There are some you expected to be here, but there are also some looking to make their mark and earn more respect, including the astonishing move Menton in their first ever chase tag tournament. We're coming at you from the world famous Arnold Sports Festival, where the most amazing parkour athletes are wowing the crowd with one thing on their mind. Don't get caught. It's the first ever World Chase Tag Pan America Championship. Seven top seeded teams have made it through to the last eight, as well as the newcomers, Movementum. But of all the quarterfinals we've got, Joey Adrian, Chase Tag legend, it's the one between Hollywood Freerunners and Tempest that really stands out. Yeah, without a doubt, everybody knows Kyle Soderman. He is a superstar. He has eight evasions already. Now, Kai on Tempest, he's been training with this Hollywood Freerunner squad. He also has eight evasions. This is going to be one to watch. Tempest came so, so close to beating the top seeds, Apex Sun, in the group stage, but then blasted through the playoffs against 2-1-5 to set up this clash with the number two seed, Hollywood Freerunners. Finally get our match against Hollywood. We're excited to go up against Kyle Soderman. I'm excited to go up against Wes Preston. They got Amos, and uh, we know Kai and Amos have been training together, so that'll be a fantastic match. They, hands down, are going to be our hardest matchup yet. But honestly, they're, they're almost a one-man team right now with Kai. And as long as we can shut down Kai and use our depth to our advantage, then I think we're going to win it. Carl Soderman, the star player of this Hollywood team, leads his squad out onto the quad. They have scored four evasions in every single match they have played so far. This might be a showdown between Soderman and Kai Baldwin, the young Australian who has lit up the quad in his debut chase tag campaign for Tempest. Evading! Athletes ready! The group stages are over. This is a straight knockout. And the first spot in the semi-finals available as Carl Soderman leads off for Hollywood and Joe Onra dives out of the loading bay but cannot make contact. But he's up and chasing again. And he bounces off the bars and drops down and doesn't quite get him. Carl Soderman just too quick, just too quick and just too powerful. Joe Onra has thrown everything at him and Soderman evades that last one as well. It is a high, high quality start to this one. And Carl Soderman gets the lead off point. Kyle Soderman doing exactly what Kyle Soderman does, moving too fast to catch him. The second you think you have an angle on him, he just does the unexpected and throws you off your game. Massive dive from Joe, still unable to get that tag. Athletes ready! This is the clash we wanted to see, Kai Baldwin. This incredible 21-year-old from Australia who dives out of the quad, he's gone! That's it! They're given the evasion, so he's gone out of the quad, chase over 2-0 Hollywood. The big clash we were looking for lasted about five seconds. Here we can see him full diving. The hand was just out of frame there. So you dove through the scissors to get that tag on Kyle. What happened? Man, in practice, in the quad, there's a wall there, so I never could go for it. I was like, in comp, I think it would be good. So I saw it and I went, missed it by this much. I'm really, really bummed out. This is a great match, though. I'm super excited. In comes Sean Nirenberg with those long limbs. Can that stop Carl Soderman? And here we see him really go through the gears, speed up, and now slow down and wait as Sean tries to find a way through. And there is a chance, and Kyle loses his footing. They both did. Sean Nirenberg recovered quicker. All right, so can confirm Kyle Soderman is immortal. He does trip <laughs> up there. I, I think he was making the right moves. If he had committed to that run, Sean would have fallen over. He may have gotten away again. Chase four, Tempest evading 2-0. Hollywood free runners. Athletes ready! In comes Amos Rendell, nearly falling off the chaser's plate there. And Sean starts at the ridge, goes over to the front line. Amos 
This master strategic tactician just runs across the front line, makes the tag before Sean gets away. You can see that strategy taking place. A lot of players try to get speed on the front line to go for an early tag. The better option is just stay on top and wait for your opponent to stop. Athletes ready! This is fascinating. Amos has spent the last month training Kai how to play this game. He wanted him on his team, but he'd already committed to Tempest. There is a game within a game here. And at the minute, it's one that Amos is winning. He goes over the sisters to the Tilted Cube. Kai makes a move under the mountain. He's claiming the tag. And I think Amos has to admit that contact was made. You can see Amos there dropping to his knees and just giving a bit of a sigh. And the reason for that is because he fell right into Kai's trap, one that Amos may have taught him. Matthew Hall, Hollywood's new recruit. He's been impressive so far in this tournament. But then all of this Hollywood team have been impressive. Matthew can't get through there as Kai goes under the sisters. He's really quick and he's so dangerous down low and he's too quick there as he gets away under the mountain. Now to the ridge. Matthew is running out of time here. This might be a first point for Tempest and I think that'll seal it because Kai heads off to the back corner and Matthew has got no more time to get another chance. Kai played that beautifully. He knows where the corners are that he does not want to waste time. Once he got over to the Lazy Boy, he didn't even fully commit to the corner. He cut immediately back over the sisters before Matthew could get his footing. Hollywood free runners! Athletes ready! Well, this is a mark of respect in that they send in Soderman straight away to try and get hold of Kai because he thinks that he has got the pace and the power to run him down. That's exactly what he does. Kai has to know better than that. You do not want to get into a foot race with Kyle Soderman. He will win every single time. Athletes ready! In comes Hunter, arguably Tempest star player at the US Championships last year in Texas. And you look at that, bearing his teeth as he tears around. Carl Soderman is so, so rapid, but Hunter, look at keep the speed up as he scrambles down low. And he's trying to find a way through, but Soderman is just about managing to keep the distance. Can he do it? Can he keep up doing it? I'm not sure he can. He can't. Can he? I have no idea. We're going to have to check the video replay. It looked like there was contact to me. We are going to DTR. Oh! I think the third time he's gone with two reaches with his arm, and the third one where it's just a flick up of the hand. I think the finger gets Kyle on the knee here. Oh, I don't know. A reminder, the onus is on the chaser to make the tag clear. If there is not enough evidence, then it'll go as an evasion. But this is a borderline call. I think it might be a finger on the knee, but I'm not sure. You can see Carl Soderman's eyes fixed on Hunter's hand, trying to get out of the way of it. There is a disagreement between the teams, rather predictably. They are going to the fans. We've got hundreds of fans here. And looking at their sides, I think most are saying evasion, but I don't know if that's going to go their way. We have a decision. The referees head to the quad. Cozy, our head ref, what's he say? Evasion given! Evasion and Carl Soderman racks up another point. Advantage Hollywood. This man is an evasion machine. Every time he gets on the quad, you're expecting to see, expecting to see multiple evasions in a single game. Athletes ready! 3-1 Hollywood. And Tempest turned to their man, Sean, who did manage to tag Kyle earlier on. He's not the quickest, but with those long strides, he can cover a lot of ground quite quickly. But can he make the move here? Yes, he can, and you can see the range, the wingspan coming into play. That last trap was executed perfectly. Beforehand, Sean had set up about two other traps, but he wasn't fast enough on pulling the trigger. On that last one, he learned from his mistakes and fully put his body into it. Athletes ready! In comes Omar Zaki. Now, Sean Nirenberg has got an evasion in this tournament. It was against Vaults, the Brazilian team. Evading this Hollywood team is a trickier proposition. But he goes over the sisters and round the front line and strides away. And Omar Zaki wraps himself around that bar. But he's straight back up and he jumps up on the mountain. I think he gets his man. What a recovery from Omar Zaki. I can tell you, honestly, I would not be able to walk for weeks after that bail <laughs> Omar just had somehow slammed Holy. into the front line. 
gets up, stays right on top of his man. Sadly, it looked like Sean made the wrong decision going up the mountain. Omar was able to get that last ditch dive to get the tag. Athletes ready! Kai Baldwin back into the action, the 21-year-old from Sydney, Australia. Oh my, Omar Zaki goes through the mountain. It did not go according to plan, and it left an easy little tag to be made by the Ridge. That was a uh, unorthodox approach to passing under the mountain. Uh, did not work out for Omar here. Kai may be ready to get another one. Looks like he's going up against Amos yet again. Athletes ready! Here we have that game within a game again. Amos Rendell, who's been training this young man for some time, and he's claiming the tag. And I think it's been given. It has been given, and Kai acknowledges it. And maybe Amos just kept a little bit of knowledge back for himself. Yeah, that was not only just a good trap. It's a relatively common one. The thing that Amos does there is he executes it so, so well, coming out at an absolute full sprint. And it puts Hollywood on the verge of the semis. Athletes ready! Tempest captain Nicodemus comes in. A big part of their training and the build-up to this has been about threading. He's been doing it dozens and dozens and dozens of times a day. He may need to call upon that if he's going to get hold of Amos here. And he does try to thread through there, but he doesn't make contact, but he'll get him here. He'll definitely get him here. They're both out of the quad. They are both tumbling out of the quad. That was... <laughs> it looked like Nico did a straight vault on top of Amos as they were going over the table by the front line, literally vaulting off of his back, which sent both of them tumbling outside of the quad. Match point, Hollywood free runners! Athletes ready! Back-to-back -back evasions ties the game. If Nicodemus gets a hat-trick, they win it. But that is a big, big ask, especially with Matthew penning him in in that back corner. And Nicodemus is out of the quad for the second time in two chases. And Tempest are out of the Pan American Championship. Hollywood, our first team through to the semis. Hollywood is looking nearly unstoppable with this team that they have right now. We build this as a clash between Carl Soderman and Kai Baldwin. Kai had his moments. He got an evasion. But Kyle Soderman got three and helps carry his team into the semi finals. It has not been as smooth or serene for the Talons as they might have liked in reaching the quarterfinals. They had to come through the playoffs to get here. But they took apart APK Gray, the experimental second team of American parkour. And now they've got to take out their A team to reach the semi finals. But with Sukar Greg, eight evasions to his name already, they've got some firepower. APK Blue! APK Blue! are through to the quarterfinals, just as they did at the US Championships. But they've produced some insane stuff already as they all slide down the mountain. Frank Mejia, back in this team, hit six evasions on the spin to beat the Mexicans' mariachi. And if it produces anything like that magic, they could be reaching the semis. Woo, APK Blue. That's a, that's a long-standing rivalry right there. We played them in Texas, and it was a good match. It was 2-1 at that time. And APK Blue might be going into the lead because Ethan Guzman is down by the Tilted Cube. My word! I know he, he's gotten in for some revenge, so I think it's going to be a real good match. I'm looking forward to see what happens. We're out for blood, and we're going to flip the script on them. So the fact that we're matched up with them again today is just one, destiny. APK Blue evading. Athletes ready! Logan Piner starting on the quad and heading towards the ridge with Gabriel Payne, the Atlanta Talons captain, chasing first. And he just gets a little bit indecisive around the loading bay, but there was real decision there going through the tilted cube and another big decision, but one that doesn't work out for Gabriel Payne. As Logan goes around the tilted cube again, and he does get the point as well. That's his first evasion of the tournament. We've had to wait till the quarterfinals for it, but it could be a big one. Logan doing a great job with the evasion there. Something that I really like to see from Gabriel the Chaser is after every attempt, you could see he was relaxed. But the problem is I think that relaxation got to him and he didn't get enough chances. Blue. Athletes ready! 
on Sukong Greg. Been a star player for this Atlanta Talons team. And you see him do that good work on the top of the ridge to force his man out of that little spot. And he's got him in the corner here. But Logan tries to make a move, and he was so focused on staying away from Sukong, he went entirely out of the court. Yeah, Logan winning that first foot race. Rightfully so, that looked fantastic. And then over by the tilted cube, he saw he was falling into Sukon's trap. So he went for the crazy play going outside onto the bars. Doesn't pay off for him. Athletes ready! Matthew Brother Washman comes in. Sukon Greg, this is the danger man for Atlanta. Scrambles down low and now puts on the jets all the way around the outside. Brother not able to cut the gap, but Sukon caught in two minds, and Matthew just made his decision for him and pinned him. That was a really good cut there from Matthew, Brother Watchman. He comes through, he knows you're either going over the mountain or under the mountain, so I'm meeting you there. If you stop by loading bay, I got you anyways. Great trap, great execution. 1-0, APK Blue. Athletes ready! Here comes Ben Ortega. The Atlanta team brother hangs around but decides to make a move under the sisters, but he doesn't do it quickly enough. Ben managed to make the tag. Yeah, Ben very patient, getting into Tiger stance on that bar by the tilted cube, just sitting, waiting, making sure both feet are planted so when the move is made, you can send the dive immediately. Athletes ready! Mark Bowles used to be the star player of this APK Blue team. You can't really say that over the last year or so. He's been outshone by some of his teammates, but he outshines Ben Ortega there. Went for the first time, made sure he got him the second. Yes, solid show of some threading through the loading bay. Even though he wasn't able to make the tag immediately, he got outside quick enough to get it under the mountain. Now he should be set for this evasion if he can play his ABK game. Blue. Athletes ready! Now then. And we see a bit of the old Mark Bowles magic. Decides to bounce off the bars by the mountain. He's wasting plenty of time here. JB gets into the tilted cube and uses those platforms to cut all the way across the quad. And frustration there for Mark Bowles, who couldn't find a way past him. Yeah, JB really just outsmarted him there. He stayed high, didn't fall into the trap of chasing, stayed on top of the obstacles and cut the corners where needed. Athletes ready! In comes Frank. A devastatingly effective chase tag athlete. Drops into the tilted cube, reaches through but can't make the tag. JB by the loading bay, sets off under the ridge. Now, is he quick enough to get away from Frank? It turns out he is, but he's just lost some speed under the sisters, and ultimately Frank saw that, and it's the quickness of thought to realize there is a chance to be had there. See here, gets on the sisters, realizes that his man has just stumbled and that there is an opportunity. But you need it's a split second decision he has to make. Athletes ready! Frank Mahir produced heroics against Mariachi and got six evasions on the spin and was carried off by his teammates in victory. If he can just get one here, then APK Blue are in a great position. Sukon is Atlanta's star player in this tournament, but he's chasing Frank here. He's tailing him around, and that's not going to work. Can he get a chance? Not there, he can't. Frank Mahir doubles the lead. They are sprinting on hands and feet right now. Frank showing, I can go just as fast as you can down on all fours. Incredible work. Athletes ready! Atlanta trial by two. Frank Mejia, just with was it a bit of taunting. Was it a bit of showmanship? There's some jittery legs there before he sets off under the ridge. He nearly stumbles, and Gabriel Payne gets a shove in the back there. Gabe does not fall for the trap. He's not going to be reverse herded here. He's the one that's going to do the herding, get you on that straightaway, use those legs to run you down. APK Blue. Athletes ready! Elijah with the fun and games on the chaser's plate. Not sure Gabriel Payne's that interested in them. Fancy little start over the front line, a fancy little finish as well. And you can see the frustration boiling out of Gabriel Payne. Yeah, what Gabriel was trying to do there was basically just show, hey, I'm going under the mountain. But Elijah rightfully did not fall for that game and caught him coming back to the tilted cube. It's almost like all the silly nonsense leading up to it was just sort of hypnotizing him to not move. And it's the old mongoose and snake thing from Elijah. Athletes ready! Anthony steps up for Atlanta. 
They need him, and he delivers with a very quick spike. Yeah, that was a fast, easy run. He's got to be feeling good, and right now is the time he needs it. He must get an evasion on the board, or the pressure is going to hit way too hard for this comeback. Athletes ready! Two fresh athletes on the quad. Tyler dives through the ridge, claims the tag, and Anthony, having just produced a spike tag, gets spiked himself. And ABK Blue are sitting very, very pretty with a 2-0 lead and only four chasers left. Tyler makes that look so easy, but you've got to understand, he is diving through these tiny gaps between these steel bars with no hesitation. Had he hesitated, Anthony would have used that to make his escape. Athletes ready! Atlanta once again go to their man Sukon Greg to try and dig them out of this hole. He must make the tag right now or they go out of the tournament. And it's that trademark stuff scrambling down low. He's quicker than anybody on this quad working down low, apart from maybe Frank Mejia. Yeah, that's one where if Sukon has one leg in and one leg out of the loading bay like that, I think your best bet is to just bounce off the mountain. Because if you try to go under, he's going to catch you. He is too fast. If you try to cut back, he's going to catch you. Athletes ready! The task is straightforward for Sukon Greg. Evade this and evade again to level the game. Matthew Watchman trying to stop him from doing that. Cuts across the corner to try and create an opportunity. There was one, but he couldn't make contact. But he's closing down that space. Dies over the table and gets Sukon Greg on the head. And this is done and dusted. APK Blue shuts out the Atlanta talents to move through to the semi-finals. And they continue to look a very, very solid outfit. There is still more to come from this team if Mark Bowles can click into gear. He may need to in the semis as APK Blue go up against the second seeds, Hollywood Free Runners. After the break, watch us take down Dexterity Depot. In your dreams, pal. Oh, come on. I'm not losing my one. But anime slash manga kind of entrance from Tim Dexter, the leader of this dexterity team. They have been hugely impressive from minute one in this tournament. A narrow defeat to APK Blue in the group stages meant they had to come through the playoffs, but they never looked any danger. And they have been racking up a whole load of evasions spread all over this team of very, very talented athletes. In the USA Championships last year in Texas, the quarterfinals saw GNF go head-to-head -head with Dexterity Depot. And it was Dexterity that won a tight one by two points to one. This is the chance for GNF, the number four seeds, to get some revenge. We knew going in that was going to be the match, and it was 0-0 for so many rounds, and then it was 1-1, one, one, and then we went to sudden death. Sean Law must evade here. And that's not going to happen. GNF are defeated. I know those guys are hungry. They won it. We beat them last time and knocked them out. So I know they're trying to do the same to us this time around. The GNF curse to lose by one point, it keeps happening. But we're excited for the rematch. When we beat GNF this time, we will do it. There'll be no questions. We will have beaten them decisively. Chase one. GNF evading. Athletes ready. GNF captain Jake gets things underway. Mike Myers looking to chase him down. He's been very, very impressive, and he reaches out but doesn't seem to make contact, and he's holding his knee. This is a nightmare start for Dexterity Depot. Mike Myers hadn't competed in Chase Stoke for a couple of years. Ladies he's come back into this, break, played well, we brilliantly over the course of this, and the within athlete. seconds of the quarterfinal, he has gone down, and it does not look good, Joey. Oh, this is so sad to see. Ay, yeah, you can just see a lot of pressure on that knee slash leg as he drops down from the mountain, which is about six feet tall. I thought I saw a tag, not as important right now as Mike's leg. Yeah, this is going to have an impact on the rest of this match because I don't think we're going to see Mike Myers competing in the rest of this. However, if it is shown that he got the tag, at least they won't be 1-0 down as well as a player down after the very first chase of this one. Now they're looking at whether the tag was made. I still cannot. I do not think there's enough evidence there to give the tag. It's a very, very difficult one. Tim Dexter, the dexterity captain, is, is indicating he believes it's brushed the forearm. But 
I can't see the fingers bending back at all. I can't see any real evidence that that's happened. Now, I am a little bit more biased than our judges. I don't know if we had one right here, but from my angle, I swear I saw the contact made. I even put up an X in real time because I thought I saw the tag. Well, they are only going on the cameras. These cameras, on the other hand, they do make it look like an evasion. And it is an evasion. If only we had a camera inside Joey Adrian's head, then maybe we would have had a different result. GNF. Evasion given, 1-0 GNF. Jake Migliarata stays on GNF. the quad. Athletes ready! Well, they were player down, and they've barely used Geo. I don't think he's quite been in the right either frame of mind or physically to compete because you've only seen him on the quad once before. He has to step up now and help his team. But this is turning into a bit of a tailing situation. He does try and cut off the corner, get centre control, but Jake is off under the scissors and scrambles back underneath them. Brilliant awareness of Jake Migliorata. He could see what Gio was trying to do. He changed his plan. Jake, so smart right there. As soon as he gets to that sister's area, he never loses eye contact with Gio. When Gio goes up, Jake goes under, and there's almost nothing you can do as the tagger in that spot. With the mic out, what's your next step? Hey, we've been here before. We lost me last time. We know how this feels. The mission doesn't change. We're still here to get business done. We're going to get it done. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Jake may have had a little bit of fortune in getting the opening lead-off point, but there was nothing fortunate about that brilliant piece of evading work. And that's pretty good as well, as Alex is unable to get him. There's a little stumble from Jake, but he is managing to recover and get away. And now he's wasting time, wasting time and jumps out of the way, but doesn't jump far enough as Alex goes through the bars of the lazy boy to get the tag. That was a full send of a dive. That bar that he's crossing over, the bottom bar, is about five feet in the air, and he is sending his entire body through, no regard for what the landing does. It's all about getting that tag. Athletes ready! In comes Joseph Rizzo. Alex Mosley already got three evasions in this tournament. Sets off, goes through the mountain very, very simply, under the ridge. Look over the shoulder to see Joe Rizzo right there. And there's a little moment there where Alex Mosley knows exactly what is going to happen and he can do absolutely nothing about it. Yeah, Joe played that absolutely perfectly. He was not rushing. He was keeping that center control and, more importantly, the high ground. As soon as Alex went towards the front line, Joe goes right to the table, and he's just going to stay there until he makes a decision. Athletes ready! In comes Aaron Lucas, one of the main men on this dexterity team, and it's going to be fast and frenetic, this one, I assure you, as he bounces off the bars and he weaves through them. And look at the way, look at the ground he's covered in such a short space of time, going through those bars on the way. The lazy boy is one of those spots where if you can make your opponent dive through, you can generally get away easily. Aaron somehow manages to make the dive, land on his feet, and continue running. Athletes ready! This is a contest, this one. Sean Law, a brilliant chaser against Aaron Lucas, one of the stars of the dexterity team. This could be very, very quick, and he's not quite quick enough, Sean Law, there. Aaron goes up to the mountain, then decides to come back. And Sean Law has got, he's herding him around here, but he can't quite find a way to make the tag. And there it is! There it is! He's a good job. He did actually make contact, because if he hadn't, he's gone out of the court. It would have been an evasion. Man, that was so much speed coming from Sean Law. I was a little bit worried for a second. If Aaron had noticed that Sean was jumping into the cube, he could have cut towards sisters, but that maneuver is near impossible. Tim Dexter, the captain, comes in, and he's straight after his man, Sean. And it's just a little body swerve to sort of show Sean towards the ridge and then carried on going towards the loading bay. Tim getting that spike absolutely beautifully, does not play around on the mountain, goes to open ground, gets the immediate tag. Now this is his time to shine. There he needs to put up some numbers Three, here and get two, his team's zero. mentality right Gee back it in it. Athletes ready! Adam Cole comes in, Tim Dexter, the team captain, the man who was ruled out of the US Championships in the very first chase playing a big part, looking to play a big part in this Pan American Championship. Nice little move to sort of send Adam one way and then go with another, scrambling down low, and he had no idea where Adam was, and Adam had gone centrally and could just watch where he was going and pick him off. 
you said it right there. Adam does the right thing, taking center control. The biggest problem is Tim Dexter was too worried about moving quickly. He was not keeping eyes on Adam. Athletes ready! Eight chases down of 16 as Paul Fisher enters the action for the first time. He just loses his footing, but he's still up and still going, makes the tag in the end very quickly. We've mentioned this before about Paul. He tends to get more opportunities than most because everything happens at double speed. Every single time he falls, he's back to his feet absolutely instantaneously. You know he's going to get five, six chances per chase. Athletes ready! A few words of advice coming from Alex Mosley towards his teammate Paul Fisher, who starts off at the bottom of the mountain as Michael Raujo drops down into the mountain to try and get after him. Paul Fisher stops and then goes. And under the sisters, but he loses a bit of pace and Mike makes his move and just about gets there. Yeah, Mike does the classic sister trap there. He just gets on top of the lazy boy. Once he comes across the front line, he Kong's up, cutting the corner. Oh, no, he goes through the Lazy Boy and then just hard strides across the sisters. That's always going to give you enough power to catch up with someone who's going underneath. 0 G and up. Athletes ready! Michael Raujo, if he evades here, then GNF really are in a powerful position in this quarterfinal contest. But Aaron Lucas is not going to let him as he just strides straight across the center of the quad to catch him at the front line in open ground. Yeah, great work from Aaron. He goes straight to the hammer when he sees Mike cutting towards the front line. Here he gets one chance by the tilted cube, comes right back, goes straight to the hammer, which is where you want to be to cut your opponent off. Please run Rizzo with a roar. Well, Aaron going through the mountain, turns back, goes under it this time. Rizzo can't get there. Joe into the loading bay and now by the ridge. And Aaron wasting time and he just gets out of the way of that hand and stops and waits and waits and waits. And the dive comes through, but the tag is made. Joe Rizzo with a major, major moment in this contest. That was a last-ditch effort. I took a peek up at the clock after he missed that second chance by the mountain. Once they got into that dance by the loading bay, it was all or nothing for Joe Rizzo. Gino! Athletes ready! Tim Dexter coming in. Looks pretty emotional. Has recently lost his father, says they're competing for him. And there's a slip there from Tim Dexter, and Joe Rizzo might be able to seal this for GNF. Just goes out of the mountain, jumps out, but Tim Dexter grasps at him and makes contact. Yeah, Joe looking uncomfortable going underneath the mountain there, so he Kongs out. But when you do that Kong, it leaves your legs trailing. Tim knows this and is able to catch him. There it is, Depot, evading! Tim Dexter must evade twice in a row. Athletes ready! In comes Sean. Tim starts by the sisters, stays down low, goes under the sisters again. Scrambles to the safety of the tilted cube. How safe is it with Sean Law there? It's not that safe at all. The tag is made on the shoulder and GNF get the job done. It is revenge for GNF after losing to dexterity of the US Championships at this stage last year. And you can see an emotional Tim Dexter sees his team's campaign come to an end in the quarterfinals, but they've played some brilliant stuff along the way. They did an amazing job and having one of their key players, Mike Myers, getting injured in the first chase, they have to be taking that into consideration. They should not be hanging their heads low. They should be proud of this one. They definitely should, but GNF continue to do enough in this tournament. We'll be back shortly with more from the World Chase Tag Pan America Championship, where the quarter-final round continues here at the Arnold Sports Festival in Columbus, Ohio. The quarterfinals of the first Pan American Championship in World Chase Tag consisted of the top seven seeds and these guys who shouldn't even be here. Late replacements with very little quad experience, but a couple of players in particular who have caught the eye and are perhaps the envy of some more established teams. They've got a couple really dangerous guys. Uh, Machine, he's just striding all over the quad. Um, really unpredictable routes. That guy is super powerful, so we got our eyes on him. Michael, I'm super quick, super quick guy. Um, and the rest of them, they're all looking really strong. Um, so yeah, it's a team to watch out for. We're not gonna let our guard down. They're very highly skilled. They have access to a quad. They really have their movement down, and they're fast. 
the sun has to set eventually. So we got to go in confident, and I think if we play our game, I think we can do well, and I think we can win. The top seeds, the title favorites, and a team that have never lost a game of chase tag other than to the other Apex team, Apex Moon, who are not here. They keep on winning games. But there's a feeling among some of the other teams that maybe they are beatable. Do those teams have it right, Joey? Man, it's Apex looked like Sun. there is some flaws Chase to their one. game plan, whether Apex that is nerves Sun. or lack of practice or other teams just catching Athletes up. Ready. See Driscoll, the former frontman in a metal band and the new recruit for the Apex team, starts off evading with Michael Frazier looking to track him down, hopping around around the bars, and look at that jump over the sisters. And he's in close attendance. And it's a very difficult man to outrun, is Michael Frazier. Very difficult. And now this is an interesting decision. They haven't been utilizing Zeke very much. So I wonder if they had that strategy to maybe tire one of these front men out. And it does look like Michael banged his knee hard on the outer perimeter perimeter here. Michael Frazier just trying to shake off that knock he took to the knee in the opening chase as Devin Straley comes in, the team captain for Apex, and well, he just shuts him down very quickly. Yes, yeah, as soon as Devin cuts across that front line, he knows, okay, I have two options. I'm either getting on top of the ridge or I'm cutting you off before you make it to it. And Michael tries to cut back, but maybe that bum knee was just kind of bothering him too much to make the fast cut. Athletes ready! Up steps Machine, the former track and field star from Jamaica, as his teammate Michael is still feeling his knee over in the player's zone. Machine just trying to work out a plan here against Devon, who glides through the mountain, goes under the ridge, and it's a race around the outside, but Devon doesn't want to do that. So he's just figure of eight around the front line, and he nearly gets away with it. Very, very nearly gets it. I was so worried when it came to the front line. This is not where you want to take Machine, and I know Devin knows that. As soon as he started weaving, I was like, oh, wait a minute, he's got a plan. Machine able to hit that full dive over the front line bar, just barely catch Devin's back. Athletes ready! A lot of Movementum's hopes lie on the shoulders of this man, Machine Ricketts, who bounces off those platforms and heads over to the front line. Max Boyce looking to cut him off at the corner, but Machine spins around, he pivots so quickly, and there's that very, very easy jump over. He tries it again, and Max might have slammed his face into the platform, but he got the tag. Yeah, it <laughs> looked like Neck just slammed into that platform, kind of got clotheslined, but he bided his time on the front line perfectly, jumps inside to cut Machine back right where he wants him. That's not where he wants his neck, though. Athletes ready! In comes Tony for Movementum. He really stepped up in the playoffs to help them see off District, the Canadian team. And he scrambles into the loading bay, but can't find a way through. He gets tangled up in the bars there, as Max now sets off into the mountain, drops down, turns, tries to get away. There's a reach and a tag is given. Yeah, he was claiming it. The refs have seen it. Not sure Max was aware, but the tag has been given. Successful chase from Tony Campanale. Yeah, it looks like Max is conceding now. He might have just been running because, you know what, maybe the refs didn't see it, maybe he doesn't call it, who knows. But here we can see as he jumps into the mountain, he peeks over his left shoulder, making it way too slow to continue turning left. You've got to go right if you're looking there. Athletes ready! Well, there's some advice being furiously flung towards Tony by his teammates, but whether he heeded it or not, I don't know. Santos doesn't care. He sees him off. It remains nil-nil, six chases into this one between the rank outsiders and the top seeds. Athletes ready! Well, Michael Frazier's back in action, so I assume that knee is not causing him many problems. We will see now that he's back on the quad if it does rear its head again. Santos managing to get through the mountain and try to get somewhere safe. The tag is claimed, nothing given by the ref. Santos shaking his head. Chase goes on, the chase goes on, and Michael runs out of time. Now he's gonna go, surely. He's gonna call a DTR. He's claiming he got him. Yeah, I think definitely he's gonna call it. That was on the opposite quad for me. I could not tell. Oh, I'm not so sure. It looks like maybe caught just the tail end of Santos. And the referees have made their decision. 
They've given the tag, and I think that comes from just a tiny lift of the fingers. Now, from this angle, it is so difficult to tell if that lift was from Michael or if that was from Santos' backside. Zero. Oh! Athletes ready! Apex, remember, needed sudden death to beat Tempest in their final group game and go through as group winners. Oh, no, he's gone down again, Michael Frazier. That was a hard one. And he's holding, that's, is that the same knee? He can't have done the other one, surely. <laughs> he might have two bad legs now. He just wraps his whole leg around the outside. Devin, however, sends him there by catching him in the same trap again, making him think that Devin's going for the dive. In reality, he wants you to cut towards sisters so he can go through the open side of the tilted cube. Michael Frazier's in the wars. Miss Shane Ricketts is on the quad, and the score remains nil-nil as Devin sets off. Goes all the way across the quad, and he just cuts away to the right-hand side, and just wrong foots, Miss Shane. But he's gonna get another chance, is he? Look at him jump over the mountain and drop down on him. But the guard, oh, what a wound, what a move! Oh, I thought he did enough! That quick change of direction from Devin, I thought he'd sold him a dummy again, and he got away with it. But Machine able to pivot and get the tag in the center of the quad. Athletes ready! First chance for Bear Schneider to get in on the axe. Aggressive chaser, but you look at him there, just waits, waits for the opportunity. What opportunity is there? Well, he can't get one there. He goes over the mountain, Machine has already flown off. Decides against going under the sisters, but he might yet go there, you know. No, he doesn't. Bear manages to set the trap, and Machine ends up out of the quad. Machine getting caught in one of the worst corners on the quad. Bear just slowly cornering him, hurting him into that spot where he knows he can strike the easiest. Athletes ready! Well, the way this has gone so far, you wouldn't know it's the top seeds and favourites versus the rank outsiders, but there is nothing in it at the moment. As Christian Fairfax tries to get hold of Bear Schneider, who's just jogging around, sort of gave him the eyes, looked one way, then went the other. And maybe he's trying to do that again, but he sets off across the quad, looks up at the timer, even Bear Schneider, as Fairfax dives through oh! the <laughs> How has Bear done that? He has shimmied around the ridge to buy himself a couple of seconds, and that's all he needed. We saw an attempt at that the other day. It did not go to plan. Bear, you can tell, has practiced this. He saw the dive coming through the ridge from Christian, and he said, I have one option. I have to go on the outside. Makes it work. <laughs> oh, my word. Athletes ready. Bear Schneider and his ridge riding has got the first point on the board. Tony has got to stop him getting a second, because Apex might be doing enough here. Bear again, constantly keeping an eye on his man, on the clock as well. Really aware, Bear, of what he needs to do. He even looks over at the timer, sees the time is running out. It's 2-0, and Apex Sun are now looking good for the semi-final. That was such a relaxed evasion from Bear. Has the time to look at his opponent, has the time to look at the clock, and he realizes Tony is not he taking ready. center control. Matt he can just play with him and Apex reverse hurt him wherever he wants Athletes him to go. He's ready! In comes Michael again, I mean, shaking off the knocks he's taken to his knees. And it does not stop him from getting the bear. Match point saved, but there's another one on the way. All right, Michael, the star man for Movementum. He has been utilized the most, he has looked the strongest, but he's taken some hard knocks in this battle. Can he pull through for Movementum? Athletes ready! Devin comes in looking to win it for his team. The captain sets off after Michael, decides not to follow him over the top of the mountain, but does vault through very, very easily. Gets to the center of the quad to retain control. Gets an opportunity. Michael tries to go around the ridge. It doesn't work. Devin gets him, and Apex Sun are in the semi-finals. This momentum team were scary. Apex again coming out on top, but just barely. Right, well, I think Michael's just pointing out, as he's tried to go around the ridge, he might have actually collided with the cameraman, and he feels that that might have played a role in this, in him ending up on the floor and Devin getting the easy I I'm tag. not going to lie to you, it looked like he was going down no matter what, but the cameraman did get in the way, and that plays a big factor in whether or not he can recover. They are going to replay the chase again. So Michael Frazier has had a bit of time to recover. What more equipment can this man take out? <laughs> Athletes ready! 
Take two then, as Michael Frazier starts by the ridge and Devin looks to get after him and finally seal Apex Sun's spot in the semi-finals. But Michael Frazier races off around the far side. And there's a bit of a gap building up. Devin won't panic yet as he sort of flirts to get into the... Oh! Now that is out the quad, and that's not made contact with any camera equipment. That is game over. Devon Straley does complete the tag. It is 2-0 Apex Sun. And what a contest it was. Movementum, newcomers to this one. They have unearthed some real talent, particularly in Michael Frazier and Michelle Ricketts. But it is the top seeds Apex Sun who reached the semis, and our last four lineup is complete. Hollywood Freerunners versus APK Blue and Apex Sun against GNF. One of those four will become the first ever Pan-American champion.